Well, it's been 24 hours and man, so much has gone down in the community. Let's cover this. And particularly in this video, we're going to be looking at the parry mastery issue, the potential Sandman being added to the game, and the follow-up from Dave's video, which got a lot of information I think a lot of players really want to find out about. Okay, so overnight, something went down. Now, obviously, I was sleeping at the time, as most people in the UK and other parts of the world would be doing, but it looks like, yeah, the servers went down for some sort of reason. Many people were saying that they were in different types of game modes whilst this was happening and people were in arena, they were in AQ and just game went down mysteriously. I'm not 100% sure with a lot of the timelines, I can get into the game now, I think a lot of players are but there have been a few connection issues over the last 24 hours and it hasn't been a smooth ride within the game. So yeah, I don't really know what is going on with it. Obviously for those that may be being affected and I hope there was something that was sorted out for you but I just don't think there's going to be a wide uh, 30 minute timer sequence for Alliance Quest but I know there were some people suffering but like I said I don't think we're going to hear anything more on this because the game is live again. Now on to the mysterious circumstance of the changing of the description of the mastery of parry. Yeah. Uh, trying to explain this to maybe the people don't know and also for those that do know and kind of think like oh yes this is a bit of a thing. Uh, I'll, I'll do my best. Parry has been one of those kind of conspiracy theory type masteries where there's been stuff where we've said as a community that Kabam have changed things and they say they haven't and obviously it's difficult to trust but at the same time everything's changed with the description and maybe the functionality of the parry mastery. With Kabam even stating thanks to reports from the community we have identified a discrepancy between the in-game description and the functionality of the parry mastery saying the parry mastery does not provide a bonus to the base stun duration past what you receive at rank 1. Rank 2s and 3s provide a longer potential stun duration that increases with your perfect block chance. Ranks 2 and 3 also reduce the amount of damage taken from parry performed per the in-game description. Now this is what the parry mastery said back in 2017. Timing a block right when attacked reduces damage by obviously X percent depending on rank if contact is made. Stun attacker stun attacks attackers for up to 1.5 seconds. Stun duration increases with perfect block chance. Now Kaban plan to make the following changes to the description saying a well-timed block right when attacked reduces damage by an additional 15%, 20%, and 25%. Obviously, it's based on rank. If contact is made by basic attacks, inflict a stun debuff for one second. Stun duration is increased by up to 0 0.5, 0 0.7, and 1 second, obviously depending again on rank, with perfect block chance. Now there are two videos showcasing potentially a parry change in the stun duration, 1.9 as you see here, and 1.6 seconds here. But this is shut down by Kaban, Mikkei, and a few other people, especially Mikkei, saying we have changed literally nothing but the description, but I will ask if there's anything else that might have happened. Kaban go on further to say all combat in the game is balanced around the duration of the stun received from parry, and we cannot extend the duration of the stun to match the current in-game description without severely changing the balance of the game. Just to put in my own thoughts on this subject, I remember back along we did a parry expose type video in a Marvel Contest Champions news. And I'm sure other people have covered this type of thing in the past as well. It may have been two or three years ago, but the fact is, has anything dramatically changed? I don't think so. I don't think, it, obviously we know it's just a description change. When I say dramatically changed, I mean over the space of the last uh, couple of years. There could be a case that there's a tinfoil hat job going on, but the fact is, if you are a user of certain champions that are very much all about doing parries and heavy attacks, Archangels, uh, your Dominoes, etc, etc, when it comes to like Incinerate Synergy. So you would know that time if it was affected because you wouldn't be able to get off your heavy attacks in order to maximise damage output. And maybe it's a case that Kabam are gearing up for something down the line that, uh, well, you know, parry is not going to be not the main focus and it's going to be all about your skill based play. Who knows? Um, again, tinfoil hat job. But uh, yeah, hopefully that clarifies the subject. Bit of a description change only. And as well, we'll wait to see what happens with, uh, with communication on the subject from players that may be going, look, I found evidence to say to the contrary. Now on to Dave's video. Now I'm gonna be doing some bullet points which I'll be throwing up on screen, which is my notes 
from this particular video, which is an amazing video. I would strongly suggest if you want more information on the topics, go into Dave's video. He has very kindly time-coded where all the things I'm going to discuss have been discussed, but obviously I'm going to do it in as quick a form as possible. Also, I want to give props to Kabam for actually as answering honestly. A few things, not so much they haven't answered, but the fact is they've done better than they did the last time. Also, good on Dave for pressing them as well. So, one thing, hashtag sorting will come at some point, and that is good news. Dual targeting is going to change a little bit as well. So, the way that you fight off against the champion going, okay, I want practice against the champion, you go to the search bar, you search the champion, and it will come up with the champion to fight. And that will be a Kabam created account, potentially. Solo events might change. I've also got my own theory on this. They maybe want to do things like daily objectives and effectively the 22 hour type event with those solo events might change with something put in place, something that's a little bit different. I've also got my theory that's saying we're probably going to see an MCC battle pass and that's something that a lot of mobile games seem to be putting in place at the moment and that might be another premium based thing coming down the line. Masteries, it's been discussed, a possible level increase, but then nothing is concrete because again, it's all down to ideas. And something I just want to point out, that uh, they're going to talk about roadmaps. And what a roadmap will basically be is there's like a start to finish of say a year, 12 months. And in those 12 months, they want to achieve X, Y, and Z. And maybe it's the case they don't achieve them, but that's what they have the capabilities of doing. So you're going to hear roadmap used uh, a lot of the house, rather than roadhouse or something like that. Anyway. Also, we've got champ research and work for people that don't really know. Only one person takes on a champion and builds that specifically, and then that's put into the game. And also the research can be done with uh, Marvel, Marvel people, people in a know in the Kabam office. And also they've got the direct contact with uh, Marvel to get ideas on how characters should be created for the game. If you want the Hulkbuster beta, that's going to be coming in April, and a June release is expected. The champion is going to be more of an offense and tanky type when it comes to uh, defense. So you're going to get hopefully uh, a good mixture of what you want and what you don't like in uh, in defense. Also, we've got a word on Nexus crystals. Yeah, they're only going to come for special occasions. Don't expect them too much in uh, in certain content. And it may be a case that big content, like big rewards, you see like acts like uh, Act Six 100%. There may be something like that. But uh, you know, it's one of the. That's when you're going to see more of them. Nexus crystals seem to be more the premium ones rather than being it's uh, you know free to play can have access to them. Arena changes. Nothing is happening. A five star arena is not happening. But the increase of five and six star shards into the game uh, to counteract the need and want to get stuff. So yes, unfortunately, it will be situated down to RNG. But that's just again how it works. Dungeon changes. Apparently there's going to be a massive dungeons change which is going to be just a complete game changer and I cannot wait for that. I personally have lost emphasis and lost like any kind of great like and want for den dungeons and I'm just getting bored of them so I haven't played them quite so much in a while. It's nice to play with subscribers that's one thing but apart from that I I'm just not just not inspired by them. So that is going to be something great to see in the coming weeks and months. Also alliance improvements of quality of life Life. Well done, Kabam. Hopefully, you can get that sorted because, look, you know, I want to be doing other stuff with my daytime without having to think about, like, oh, damn it, I've got to go and move in a queue. Cavalier difficulty is coming this year. Uncollected rewards, not going to be updated, but there's going to be content, content progression based alterations. So, I don't know really the extent of that, but it could be a case of saying, like, right, well, instead of you getting a tier four basic, instead you get. Uh, I don't know, uh, tier five, tier five basic slash uh, half of half of each, half tier five, half tier four. I don't know uh, more than that. That was all they said was it's going to be content progression based alterations. Also, hacking, modding, and cheating. They get, they ban a thousand, a thousand, thousand accounts each week are banned by Kabam. And also a new system is coming to prevent the further um, this happening in a negative effect in the way uh, of the game and uh, that's good. It's good that's been affected. Loyalty and help button. They're working on different methods and important uh, importance of loyalty should be with your alliance. So that's something they want to look into uh, and obviously make it less important as well. They're, they're kind of figuring out whether or not they want to make it more of a case of, right, so you're in alliance, you're showing loyalty or they're saying like, right, you don't need quite so much loyalty nowadays. But that would be an issue for the loyalty store. But we'll see how Kabam work that in. 
And uh, also, towards the end of the video, Mike said there's going to be tools for Alliance leaders coming into the game, which is going to be really exciting to see what that's all about. And also, there's going to be a better early game progression program. Now, just to have my hot take on this, I do feel a lot of the things seem to be positive, but there are elements of things, as I said, that Kabam haven't really addressed. And whether or not they have an idea of what they're doing is yet to be seen. Stuff for the arena, I'm not sure if I'm overly happy with the response, especially considering, I know as they said, you can have too many arenas in the arena type list. But if you do something where you incorporate the four star basic into whatever the five star one would be, and say it's at a master and you're able to get it, that sorts that problem out. Obviously, I'm not a game developer, they'll probably say otherwise, but I just feel that could be a good solution. The solo events, I'm not really happy with the way that that might change, unless there's a daily objective put in that allows you to get the same stuff for the grind that you'll be doing. Saving time is great, quality of life is more important. So having things like seven hour solo events, 22 hour solo events into one daily objective gets me interested in doing this. It kind of, yeah, will be an extra grind, but also if you're doing all the stuff, it kind of incorporates it into one package, which look, I really rate. And let's finish off and talk about masteries. Now, for some players, they may feel that the question being answered is not in the way that they would want to hear. And especially knowing and wanting this to be delivered in a very timely fashion is not the case. I think we'd all complain more if Kabam changed the mastery setup, did the respecking, the way of changing pages, as they even say in the video, and they mess up the game. I think we'd be really angry about that as opposed to where we are now. We're just going, look, Give us the full information, we want to know what is happening, and especially down the line. Seems that like 2020 is going to be a big year, but look, let's face it, we've not got any kind of tangible evidence, concrete information to go, look, this is what they plan to do. It's just kind of like saying we're doing something, and obviously you can either go, look, this is the plan that when you click on this, it changes your mastery setup to a suicide mastery, or you go on this setup and it's like one of two mastery setups, a normal, a suicide mastery, and you can chop and change. But I don't know what the future holds. Uh, I would have liked to have had some bit information, a bit more information, but I'm sure that will happen in time. What are your thoughts on the subject? Put them down in the comment section down below. Would you have liked it to be answered differently? Is there something in particular you feel wasn't delivered well? Is there something that you are looking forward to finding more information about? Thoughts? Comment section down below. Also, Dave is at it again with new champions being teased. Now, as you know, we well, I thought that we got Mole Man and uh, maybe Fire Lord. But I don't think that is the case, as some people pointed out in the comment section of that particular video. It is more likely Nova being the champion, being fighting off against the particular enemy. So yeah, it looks like this is the second champion, which is more than likely going to be a champion like Sandman. Or it could be Samuel John La Roquette, who is actually called Rock. It does look fairly likely based on the build that yes, it can go into some Omega Sand-like creature that is able to then take on enemies. And even though this is a blurred image, you can clearly make out that it's either a case that name is a lot larger. Where the mouse cursor is at the moment compared with the other side where, look, we know it's Nova, that looks like either a double bowed or kind of a name together, which could really spell out Sandman. Look, I'm using mouse cursors and blurred images of blurred names as detective-based knowledge. I'm not Sherlock Holmes, you know. But also, because Kabam are saying this year they're going a little bit more obscure, whether or not characters like Kra, Rombu, or even Oog could be coming to the game. I laugh, because I, I, you, you, know, you never know. But yeah, let, let, let's face it. It would be better for this to be Sandman. Players know about this. They can just go, this is a cool character. There could be a cool link to things like Stark Enhanced Spidey, OG Spider-Man, some decent synergies. We do need to build teams like the Sinister Six and also build around further than that and just look at the uh, Spider-Verse. It's, it's cool to have another Spider-Verse character, especially one that's new rather than like a, a new suit if you get my meaning. So yeah, more than likely this will be Sandman, so uh, good news. And yeah, that has been the video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like button. Hopefully you're well informed with stuff going on in the community. I'll see you maybe in another video today, or if not, we'll be doing one tomorrow or a couple tomorrow, whatever it is. Check out some new content here. Check out some supporting links here. And as always, I shall see you in the next one. Bye-bye for now.